I mean, it's obvious that with Stan and Ali, you have a lot of uh, visual evidence of, that you're working from because their their looks are well uh, established. But with something like Suspiria, the more kind of grisly uh, effect, makeup effects, I'm wondering what kind of visual references you, you called upon to, to put that together. No, oh, yeah, that's uh, uh, an interesting question. Um, so we had uh, Luca Guadagnina, the director of Suspiria. Um, he uh, uh, had some references from an artist called Alfred Kubin, uh, some uh, etchings, uh, um, and uh, he referenced a lot of the characters that we did from those from those drawings and from, from some other sketches you know and then um we pulled all sorts of uh, strange and wondrous images from uh, the internet i use uh, pinterest quite a lot uh, and it's a great reference tool i mean these days it's great because you can just go on google and you can type in death mask or something you know and up pops loads of yeah. you know images and then you can go from one thing to another and you know basically uh, you know we had a long period of time between first um you know, uh, finding out about the movie to the act, movie actually starting. So I, I spent, you know, you know, a whole year just collecting uh, various images. You know, I mean, not the whole time, but obviously just here and there. We had, we had a bit of a break between doing a test make of Untilda and actually then, uh, you know, getting hired to do the whole movie. So um, there, there was quite a bit of time to collect reference. You know, and, and watching that uh, contortion scene dancing slash contortion scene that was that's obviously a showpiece in the movie uh it's really really shocking and effective when it happens uh how much testing went into that to make sure it was reading properly on camera oh man yeah we we didn't really have much time to test anything um we we had nine weeks from from the get-go uh, from having the actress cast, um, and then it was just a case of, uh, you know, Luca described that scene as he wanted to pulverize this woman in a, in a, you know, in a couple of minutes, and make it very shocking and very brutal, and he wanted to grab everyone's attention with that scene, which which he does in the movie, you know, it's a, it's a great it's a great sequence, and we had to sort of work out a way of turning that into reality, you know, how how do we because uh, you know Luca had these drawings of you know, a woman that just that was just a blob of flesh on the floor, you know, and we had to work out how do we do this effectively and how do we do it in, in stages and how do we do it practically and how do we, you know, achieve it, you know. And I'd seen, uh, you know, I referenced uh, Deliverance, uh, the movie Deliverance, where an actor could uh, dislocate his shoulder and uh, he mm. gets swept away in the river and his shoulder is dislocated and it's a really disturbing image. And I said to Luca, hey, why don't we just... Start off by uh, twisting her arm behind her back in a really unusual, you know, contorted way, and then we could do her leg, and we could do her ribs, and we could do her jaw, and you know, and we, we slowly but surely we worked out these beats uh, where, our, you know, Eleanor Fakina, the actress who plays Olga, could contort herself and crawl around on the floor with these, uh, you know, body parts that we'd stuck on her and twisted out of proportion, and and that's how we did it. And then visual effects uh, removed her real leg and her real arm. Uh, um, uh, and, and that's how you end up with this uh, contorted uh, Olga that's all twisted out, you know. Um, wow. Uh, uh, it, it was quite an interesting gag. <laughs> well, and I, I recall that scene you're talking about in Deliverance with uh, with Ronnie Cox, and that's and that's an interesting effect that's right. because Ronnie Cox, it, that's right, that's the actor. Yeah, it, it it seems like it seems like maybe. Uh, uh, maybe it, it might have been a, a simpler effect, but it is so much more effective than any kind of blood you could have thrown on the screen. It just it just looks painful. You you, you just feel it in your gut. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know that was you know how do we how far do we twist this? And I I'm always like okay let's just do it let's just do it where it looks almost like it could be real. You know almost like the actress could do it herself, but 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 not, you know, like, you're like, hey, she can't possibly twist her leg back that far, you know, but let's not do it so far that it actually looks ridiculous. You know, that's the, that was the, the key to it looking really, uh, you know, real and, and nasty, I think, you know. Yeah. I want to ask you about um, collaborating with actors. 
because you both have a job to do, uh, and one complements the other. Uh, for instance, with Tilda Swinton in this, which you designed a, a number of looks for her, uh, jaw-droppingly uh, effective looks. What's the process of helping her transform? What's the conversations that you guys have back and forth to make sure it works for what she wants to do as well in terms of her performance? Yeah, uh, uh, again, a, a, a good, interesting question. It's uh, quite often uh, these actors are um, so busy that we don't have um, much contact, really. Uh, very rarely have a conversation with the actor before you make the prosthetics for them. And usually the first contact is when you do the first test makeup. You know, and sometimes by then it's too late to change anything. You know, you don't have the money or the time to go back and revisit anything, you know. But in, in this instance, uh, Luca had, had rung up and he wanted us to see if we could actually turn Luca, uh, turn Turbo into this actor, Luke Ebersdorf, and who would then play Clemper, you know. So we were creating this fictional act, fictitious actor. Um, and we did the test makeup, and uh, uh, and then a year later we went back and we remade it. You know, it was really we did the first test makeup just to prove to Luca that we can actually do it. You know, or just to see. It wasn't to prove. It was to, it was to see if we could do it. And Luca was really happy with it, um, and Tilda was happy, and we we sort of all of us realised that we thought we could actually do this. You know, and and and, and fool people. And the whole idea was to keep it really quiet and not, not have anybody know ever. Really, it was it was going to be a, a sort of art piece, you know. And it it, it fit in with Luca's uh, vision of the movie as being this all female uh, cast. Now, apart from the two incidental police officers, everyone else is is, is female, and he wanted. To see if Luke, uh, if Tilda could play it, and also to uh, she would then be uh, you know triumvirate of characters. You know she'd be Marcos, she'd be Klemper, and she'd be Madame Blanc in the same way that there's three witches at the core of the movie. You know Suspiria, La Carmara, and Tenebrae. So that was the the sort of idea. It was a bit of a link between these three strong female characters and the three strong female witches. Mm. And when, but when you're doing something like Tilda's uh, older man, um, I mean, you it has to look right, but it also has to be functional for her. I, I mean, is there a process where you try to make it as uh, as kind of lightweight or unintrusive as possible? Yeah, I mean that's always uh, you know what I try and do, try and make a, a makeup look invisible. You know, and the, the less you do, the the better really. Uh, the more subtle you can be. And normally you're trying to work with the actor's face and and use the actor's own features. You know, but in this instance we had to totally disguise Tilda, and also make her turn her into a man. So you know the pieces are much thicker than I'd normally make them, and you know the jawline is really heavy. To try and just Tilda's got a very slender feminine jawline and she's got a long slender neck and she's got beautiful high cheekbones and we were trying to counterbalance all that stuff and make her look heavy heavy as we could and, and masculine you know mm. uh, so um, you know and Tilda had a lot of input in in terms of uh, how she wanted the shape of the face to look and you know, after we did the first test we got some notes from Tilda try this try that. And we re-sculpted it. Josh Weston, uh, a really great sculptor that I have working for me, um, he, he sculpted the makeup. He sculpted both both versions, actually. And uh, my, myself and Josh just came up. We found some reference pictures. Uh, you know, we used, uh, Samuel Beckett was one of the characters that we referenced, and there were several others. We looked at German psychoanalysts. You know, you can type in, in Google German psychoanalysts, and up, up pops pictures of these Germanic faces. You know, so we tried to put a bit of that sort of Eastern Bloc look in, in the Germanic look into in into the makeup as well, you know. Uh, so hopefully some of that reads um uh, when you're watching the film. And I, I was I was chatting with um Jan Sewell uh the other day and she she mentioned you and and the assistance you provided her on uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. And I, I I I had asked her a question that I was interested in asking you as well, which is you know, Suspiria is one thing when you're when you're dealing with uh, kind of uh, kind of a wildly imaginative, slightly grotesque world. 
But Stan and Ollie, when you're dealing with a real, real well-established people, um, where you have all this wealth of visual information on them already, do, when you do something like that or Margaret Thatcher, does it feel more restrictive uh, in terms of uh, what you're able to do? I guess it's just a different brief, really. Um, one is you're, you're trying to be faithful to history, uh, but the interesting challenge there is how, how do you use the actor's face and, um, you know, like, for example, how do you create Freddie Mercury from Rami Malek? You know, it, it, Rami looks nothing like Freddie Mercury. You know, and I'm a huge Queen fan. I was really, um, you know, loving being involved in that. I'm a huge Laurel and Hardy fan, too. And you're trying to create these characters, um, but you're trying to morph them onto a, a, a different face. You know, so you've just got to pick out certain elements that would actually help you think that would help to create the character. So with Rami, it was like, okay, we can do a nose for him, and that will definitely help him achieve um, the the character of Freddie and the teeth and the wig and, uh, you know, everything else that uh, Jan uh, designed. Uh, We did sculpt some cheek pieces for him, and uh, I always thought it was a bad idea to try and try too hard to make him look like Freddie Mercury because then you're just going to make him look weird. Uh, You know, it's not going to look like Rami Rami Malek. It's not going to look like... Freddie Mercury and it's going to be somewhere in the Netherlands, you know, whereas you can put a nose on him and that will really help, you know. It's like with Stan and Ollie, we, we, we just did a couple of things. We did prosthetics on Steve Coogan, flattened out his chin, we gave him a new chin uh, to, to create this this particular look that Stan Laurel had, and then we, we created some uh, ear appliances because his ears stuck out, you know, and that's, you know, a couple of things that really helped. Uh, transform uh, Steve Coogan into Stan Laurel. So it's really just a question of picking out the right thing, really, and, and uh, augmenting the right thing, but but staying true to your actor as well at the same time. With John C. Riley, uh, I mean that's a full body job, right there. Uh, and and is, that's right. Yes, uh, you yeah, know with John, it's a, it's a fat uh, again, suit. It's like you know, John's got a really recognisable face, and we're trying to turn him into uh, Oliver Hardy. And we have to put this big, thick appliance around because we have to achieve the weight. So there's there's a certain thing that you have to do. Then you know, you can't do subtle face appliances. You know you're, you're creating this big, big fat person. You know from from somebody who's not fat. You know so you 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 know we have to cover him in a, a big body suit and a big fat makeup. So that's another challenge. You've got to try and make that look realistic. You know it's got to it's got to conform to the actor's face shape and it's got to sit with his forehead otherwise it's going to look like a pear and you know uh, it, it, it's then down to myself and the sculptor again this is Josh Weston sculpted that Oliver Hardy makeup and I, I sculpted the Stan Laurel makeup and we were working that, on that at the same time you know so we had both cast life cast next to each other and we'd put them together and say oh you know that's great they, you know the two guys that you know we'd, we'd sort of you know put it in Photoshop and composite a, a bowler hat on, onto it and the moustache and See if it worked, you know, and that's uh, that's all part of the uh, design process.